This podcast contains strong language and adult themes. Listener's discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to A Page Too Far, the show where each week, one of us reads a book and tells the other all about it. Will it be bad? Will it be good? Who knows? Let's find out. You're going to hear something different here when I introduce myself, right? Okay. So I want to warn you ahead of time. My name is Quoth. Okay. The Raven. Nobody's going to get that. <laughs> They'll get it when I explain it here in just a bit. They don't know who Quoth is. Well, that's why I said you specifically. I don't mean <laughs> okay. the audience. No. The audience is going to have one person will know. One person will know. Okay. Good. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with me as always is my co-host, a racist man's cat. Oh my God. You know exactly where I'm going with I know this. exactly what that is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm definitely looking forward to the unbridled racism in this episode so yeah this so i i i did something that we sometimes do where i told you what i was going to do a a little bit ahead of time yeah vaguely vaguely i didn't give specifics but uh today we're gonna do something i'm gonna say we're do something a little different but i feel like i say that every episode i do i mean we kind of do something a little different so you know we're maybe that's the meme now we're gonna do something a little different it's like monty python (laughs) (laughs) now for something completely different we are going to look at two specific short stories. Mm-hmm. And since this is the episode that's coming out like five days before Halloween, I figured I would do one from Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. Who, while not a uh, not a horror writer, still does some... Uh, so it's gothic horror. Uh, yeah. 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 Gothic horror is the very good yeah. week, which we talked about it's, last it's, week. It's existentialism yes. and emotional struggles. Yeah. That sort of thing. Uh, and then one short story from H.P. Lovecraft. Awesome. So these are, and I picked one of them. Apparently I didn't realize it is like super, super well known. Um, the other one less so, but I mean, both of their works have been dissected right beyond all measure. Yeah, so we're not going to add to anything. <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just our opinions on some, uh, existing. And actually, uh, this, uh, Edgar Allan Poe short story is a fan submission. Oh, sweet. Uh, okay. from one of our faithful, faithful listeners. So, so thank you for that. You know who you are. So I have to talk just for a second about our last episode, mm-hmm. the turning of the screw. Right. The Taming of the Shrew. Uh, I'm saying this because I think people are going to get pissed off at me. Oh, okay. (laughs) All right. A little Um, caveat here. Yeah. Disclaimer, in in defense of myself, I read it in a day and then we recorded the next day. It's true. It was a very quick turnaround for that book. Yeah. I didn't look into people's essays or what people had to say about the book. I literally read it once and whatever I gleaned from it, I gleaned from it. Okay. There's a lot of shit I missed in that book. Oh. <laughs> and it mostly has to do with the the overly verbose writer, right? Okay. It, it was okay. so flowery and abstract and stuff. I read it and I was like, oh, I'm just going to move on. Right. This is hard to dissect. Summarize right? that thing, move on. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. There's, there's stuff I missed. I think I said in the episode at the end that I didn't think that the previous governess, because there are parallels between the previous and the current governess. Right. And I was like, I don't think it's really that deep. I think it's just that it just makes a connection between them yes. for some form of empathy. I think I was wrong. <laughs> oh. A lot of people seem to think that it's all about the governess. Oh, I right? see. Everything is about the governess. And, and, and these ghosts are issues that she had, which is not at all what I picked up. I, I couldn't discern what the fuck she had, you know, as far as a struggle. It seemed like we didn't really know a lot about her. Exactly. No, that's exactly my point. It's like, I don't really know anything about her, so I didn't attribute any any arc or struggle to her, really. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people think that she is actually insane. Oh. And these ghosts don't exist. I see. Um, but, but then the one maid is like, I heard the little girl say horrible shit and she seemed possessed, so I don't know. Right. And then it's she, weird. And she <laughs> described to people that she couldn't possibly friend. know yeah exactly people yeah. who were real people so i'm uh, reading inter- like reading reviews and watching videos of people talk about this it seems like everybody has a different interpretation of the book sure and i get that what one of the biggest things i missed was at the end because okay. at the at the end they kind of defeat the ghost or at least that's how what i thought it was right right uh the daughter was taken away yeah from and, bly and, manor and then miles was like kind of battling and right and he renounced his, yeah yeah that sort of thing Smitty Werbin, Jaeger Man Jensen. What I didn't say was that he kind of collapses at the end there. Oh. And I didn't think it was important because I'm like, well, he's obviously exhausted from this struggle with yeah. this ghost, right? The majority of people believe that he just died. Oh. And that it's a bad ending. Like the ghost won out. Oh, I see. 
Oh, that's a very different interpretation. I, I did not take that away from it at all. There's literally nothing there to me that says that he died. Yeah. It literally just says he collapses. I don't huh. know why that should mean he died. Unless, <laughs> like, it, unless that word has like a different connotation when it was written. Maybe. I don't know. But, but still, it, the book is really, 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 um, what's the word? Dense. The book is really divided. Ah. Like. There's there's several different camps of people yes. who all have different interpretations, and it seems like half of the people that read it love it, and half of the people that read it hate it. So <laughs> okay, it's a very divisive book. Um, but hey, that was my interpretation. I'm sure I got things wrong, and I missed a lot of shit, but oh we, well. We do that with almost every book. <laughs> yeah, oh well. It's just that one where I was, because I was gushing so much, I love gothic horror, and then I just yeah, like missed yeah. over a bunch of stuff. Like, sure. uh, I do plan to read it again in the future. And I'm sure every time you read it, there's more stuff. You can pick something out. Yeah. 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 But I just wanted to put that on there. That little caveat is that I read it in a day and I didn't do any research and I didn't, (laughs) I didn't dwell on anything in the book. I literally read it once, wrote something down and moved on. And if I couldn't understand a little bit, I skipped it. So, (laughs) I mean, that's okay. That's, that's kind of what we're here for though. But if you did have a reaction to that episode, say you missed something, whatever, let us know. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Go ahead. Write write to, write to us anyway. Yeah. But. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, but, you know, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's not a bad thing. That's what we're here for. The first story we're looking at is Edgar Allan Poe's. Okay. It is called Hop Frog. I, I'm not familiar with that one, actually. Okay. That, I'm kind of surprised by that, actually. Because yeah. I know you you exist in this realm more than I do. I'm, I was kind of expecting that. But, uh, but that's okay, because uh, I came prepared. So it was written in 1849. Okay. And he died in 1849. Oh, wow. This is one of the last published works of right. his. Okay. Um, I don't know if it was fully penned before then and then published, mm-hmm. you know, af- in a compilation or anything like that. I, I didn't do that much research into it, but uh, this is the, uh, the listener submission. So uh, this is a short story, not even a novella. It's like a really short story, uh, which both he and Lovecraft did a lot of okay. on top of like poetry and then actual novellas. Right, and, right. You know, that kind of thing. There's an alternate title to this. We're going to skip that until a little bit later because it. It says something about the book that I don't want to reveal yet. Okay, yeah. It's a little, little spoilery. Exactly. Just a little bit. Just okay. a little bit. Okay. Uh, so, let's dive in to Hop Frog. Picture this. Picturing? Silence. That's really hard to picture. Blackness. That's easy. So, nothing. One, one is one is nothing to do with sight. Yeah, exactly. And then the other is everything to do with sight. <laughs> <laughs> the camera pans down and we're in a medieval courtroom. Wait, this isn't, what, 1949? They have cameras? 1849. 18, so, no, oh, this is just me I was off only by 100 years, yeah. but still no cameras, right? <laughs> they had cameras in 49, in 1949. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to shut up then. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but not 1849. Well, they had cameras. I don't think they had video cameras. Right, right, right. The camera pans down and we're in a medieval courtroom. The king on a throne so large, he takes up and kind of overfills the throne. Should really be sitting on two thrones, in my opinion. Oh, I thought you were saying the throne was so large. I realized he, that, and that's why I kind so of kept large. describing okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's fat king, right? Okay, very fat king. fat king. Yeah, super fat king. His seven advisors are the same. Huge fat men. Okay. I, I have a feeling this is a corrupt monarchy. <laughs> There's a lot of symbolism in Poe's works. Okay. There's some symbolism in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll talk about this, because I want to go through the story and then talk about some. There's, look. Kind of the same thing. There's a lot of different interpretations right, of right. what happens here. Uh, some of the overall themes are generally agreed upon, but um, not as controversial, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, seven advisors, just the same as him. There's a fool dancing in front of them dressed in motley, which is just a fun word. Yeah, it is. And the king and his advisors are cracking as many jokes at him as he is at them. Okay. This is our scene. We joined Hopfrog, the, he uses the term dwarf. Okay. Jester. Uh, who is explicitly referred to as hitting the trifecta here. He's a jester, Mm -hmm. he's a dwarf, Mm -hmm. and he's a cripple. Oh, wonderful. Okay. How is he a cripple? Uh, It doesn't particularly say. Okay. Yeah, it kind of doesn't really come up. So it's not important then? It's not important. I also, there's no deficiency that I can think of that would cause some of the things in this to be able to happen. I would guess he's called Hop Frog because he has to hop because of his crippledness. I'm, I'm wondering if he has like a bum leg or something. Yeah. But we'll talk about that again in, in just a minute. Okay. He and his friend Trippetta, a... <laughs> okay. Trippetta. Yeah. 
Uh, a female dwarf. Okay. Taken from the same place. Okay. Uh, they were both taken from their native country, quote, in some barbarous region. Mm-hmm. Doesn't specify where. Definitely not Africa. Right. <laughs> Are novelties to the king. Mm-hmm. So the king is renowned for his quick wit and his need to be entertained by jokes and jests. That's all he wants. Trapetta uh, obliges when she can, although she is renowned for her beauty, even through her dwarfism. Okay. Uh, she is sought after and her opinions matter to a lot of people. She has a yeah. lot of influence and she uses her influence to benefit herself as well as Hopfrog. Okay. They, they stick by each other. That's good. Yeah. Now there's a massive feast and the king summons Trapetta and Hopfrog. Trapetta had set the stage and uh, basically was like the party planner. Okay. And then Hopfrog is the entertainment. The king gives Hopfrog a glass of wine and says, hey, drink this in cheers to your missing friends. Missing friends? Like people that aren't there? Well, it was Hopfrog's birthday. Okay. And he had been taken from his country. He had no friends other than Trapetta. So the king is saying, drink this glass of wine in honor of those who can't be here because we're holding you here. Uh, okay. He's being a douche. I guess. Yeah. I'm just thinking of the logic of it. It's a little it, weird. It kind of goes on. Hopfrog takes a drink and his eyes start to water because he's, you know, he's sad. He's about to cry. Like that. Okay. That stung him. Uh, on top of that, he doesn't like to drink, but the king is kind of forcing him. Right. The king cries out, see, this wine cheered you right up. You're crying. You're crying tears of joy. Mm, okay. <laughs> Just ragging on him. Yeah. Yeah. Now the king tells Hopfrog, we need a jest for this feast, but not a normal jest. No, we need a, like a super jest. Okay. Give us something new. And Hopfrog stays silent for a bit. And the king basically says, drink more wine. It's going to open up your senses. <laughs> He's going to whip his dick out. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and he tries to bully him. Trapetta comes forward with tears in her eyes and begs the king to spare Hopfrog. Right. He throws wine in her face. Okay. Yep. Says, oh, you're, you're so whiny. <laughs> Do you want some cheese to go with that wine? Uh, yeah. Something my dad used to always say whenever I complained about something. <laughs> yeah. You want some cheese to go with that wine? The king then relents and Hopfrog says, well, I, I do have a joke. Except, it, 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 well, it's one that we used to do all the time back in my village, but here I've never done it. Okay. The king says, perfect. Hopfrog says, unfortunately, it requires eight volunteers. The king says, perfect. Me and my advisors. Oh, this is beautiful. No, don't. Uh-huh. Don't. <laughs> Don't do that. So here's what we do. We call it the eight chained orangutans. Okay. Yep. Orangutans are from Indonesia, not Africa. So I know he, nothing about that. Well, okay. Well, he, he can't be from Africa then if he knows what orangutans are. Okay. Maybe they're from Indonesia. Okay. Some barbarous <laughs> land is all we're given. Okay. 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 Yeah. So he's a barbarian. He's a halfling barbarian. He's a <laughs> <laughs> he, he calls him specifically a dwarf. Uh, okay, okay then. He's a <laughs> barbarian dwarf. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, and the fun in this jest lasts in being well enacted. Okay. So the better the better you do at playing the part, the better the jest goes off. If you stick with it, the best part, quote, the best part is the fright it occasions among the women. What? End quote. The fright it gives the girls. The best part is how it scares <laughs> the women. The, wh that's the best part. Is that their idea of a good time? <laughs> that's, that's the, it's a joke, right? It's a practical joke, which is what the King's all about. I, oh, this is like so fucking sketch. It's a little weird. <laughs> I'm going to need eight people. We're going to scare the shit out of some ladies. It's sus. The King is like, yeah, hell yeah, let's do it. It's real sus. <laughs> He's it's a frat guy. Real sus. <laughs> uh, he, I mean, kind of is a frat guy, yeah. right? That's all he does is just shoot one liners at people and do practical jokes. Makes sense. It's like half of our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> the Jester knows his audience. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to disguise you all as orangutans and then I'm going to chain you up, right? We have to make it convincing. And then you'll pretend to run into the crowd and get loose. Yeah. I'm going to need you to put this target on your back for this, this gag. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you need to, you need to step inside this bear trap for a second. So yeah, you're going to, you're going to run into the crowd and cause panic okay. and it's brilliant. Best jest I've ever, ever done. I'm sure one of the advisors was like, oh, why, why, why do we have to be chained up for this? I mean, you're going to, you're going to question the king. I'm, I'm just saying we could probably just run around without the chain and you know, I'm, you know, no, you have to make it convincing because they, they want to mimic 
the this is I'm I'm trying to piece this together because this was actually explained. Uh, they want to mimic the people who capture great apes and chimpanzees in Borneo. Okay, and they chain them together, and they chain them together in a specific way. So they want okay. to. Okay, Rock says we have to chain you that way too to make it look convincing. Okay, they're probably also fat. The chains don't go around their necks. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So Hop Frog dresses the king and his advisors. He uses everything imaginable uh, from tar. <laughs> okay. To straw, uh, sticking shirts in. Uh, says sticking shirts in drawers, but it should be stocking, it's like stocking uh, a pair of stockings. You know. Okay. Like socks. Like yeah. a specific material. What was the sentence? Stocking shirts and drawers. Uh, th- okay. Stocking as in putting something in another. No. What, what, the, no, what no, are you no. talking about? Stocking, stocking as in the noun that is a piece of clothing. Right. Stocking. Is that being used as a verb or are they no, saying it's stocking, a noun. comma, shirts, comma, drawers? It is stocking shirts. Like almost like pajama shirt. I've never heard the stocking term shirts stocking shirt before. They're, this is medieval times, right? They dress in motley. <laughs> they dress in like onesies. Okay, I'm not familiar like with that Like that kind of thing. Okay, all yeah, right. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Like, a, like a, almost like a jumper. So an undershirt or... Yeah, yeah. Sort of. A, yeah. A shift. Yeah, something like that. Of, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Something you'd wear like under everything. Right. But like, you know, so they're, they're, the point is he's dressing him up. Uh, and uh, they, they were unrecognizable. He did such a good job. Hoprog chains them all together, just like they do in Borneo. And Trepetta sets the scene. So they're in the grand saloon of the palace. Okay. Uh, and the king had basically told a bunch of people, hey, come by at this time. Okay. And Trepetta sets a stage, and then all the people are in the waiting room. There's a crowd of about 50 to 60 people, and no one knows it's the king. That's right. the important part. Mm-hmm. Right. They're let in, and many women swoon from fright. Almost immediately. Just by looking at them? <laughs> Just by looking at them. The king, is, it also mentioned specifically the king had forbidden all weaponry inside the room. I think that's right. a good call. That's a very good call. Yeah, you don't want the prank to go too far. But also a good call is just not not letting yourself get tarred and <laughs> strawed and yeah. chained up. Well, I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, a chain lowers from the ceiling and hooks the chain that binds all the orangutans. Oh, fuck! It hoists them up and they're shocked that they can't undo the bindings. <laughs> they're shocked. So they were kind them. of expecting it to be a show, and then eventually the grand reveal. Yeah. This isn't part of the plan. <laughs> now Hopfrog shouts, "Wait, leave them to me! I think, I think I know them. Uh huh. I think I can see them." And he jumps on the heads of some of the crowd and grabs a torch. That uh, okay? <laughs> Which is where I question the physical deformity. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's like he's very, very agile for being crippled. Yeah, yeah, and the, the also, part specifically. Like the dwarfism makes sense, but. But also, like, just a, a small person can still be, like, between 50 and 70 pounds, I would guess, right? Yep. So that hitting you on the head is a little, ow. Yeah. <laughs> but, he, but he doesn't. Uh, he grabs a torch, and then he goes back and looks closely. He says, yes, I think, I think I shall soon find out who they are. The crowd goes silent Okay. at this point. They're not saying anything? Like, I'm the king. No. I'm the advisor. They have to keep with the... Uh, no, they have no! to keep the jest. No, this you're, part of you're the jest. being hung by your neck, right? That's it's over. Not, not, no, no, no. I think, I think they're more chained, like around the, like the not wrist, not collared. The wrist, maybe the back, like around the waist, that kind of thing. It's still got to be painful. Very painful. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, all right, fuck this, get me down right now. Not as painful as this though. Hop Frog holds the torch close, and they all burst into flame because they, they're covered because they're covered in tar and yeah. like stocking and straw. He says, yes. He actually, he climbs onto the chain on top of them. Okay. So the chain is dangling from the ceiling. They're at the bottom. He's kind of partway up. Right. Uh, and he says, I see who you are. You are the king. These maskers, these are your king and his seven counselors. And as he says this, he uh, lets loose a noise that had been heard earlier that I didn't think was a big deal, but it sounds, okay. he, com- he calls it a call mixed with the grating of teeth. I have no idea what it would actually sound like. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you can hear the gritting of teeth across a room, that's yeah. fucked. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> horrible. Uh, and he says, this is your king who hits a defenseless girl and who, uh, whose cronies egg him on. And is then that he, Chris Brown? Nice. <laughs> and then he climbs through a hole in the ceiling and disappears. Why is there a hole in the ceiling? Well, the chain had to come through something. That would be a tiny ass hole then, right? I mean, look, he and Trepetta, <laughs> Trepetta arranged everything. She's never seen she was, again and neither is Hopfrog. Okay, she's like, hey, can we cut a hole in the ceiling for a lull? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> is that the end of the story? That's the end of the story. I the hate king it, and his counselors story. are burned alive. I hate it. <laughs> uh, Hopfrog 
gets revenge right for for wrongs perceived and unperceived and actually right. committed okay trepetta assists the moral of the story is don't enslave people from the philippines or from indonesia i mm, i think it would be like don't don't mock someone who's cleverer than you i don't know there's that yeah there is so the uh the teeth grating noise yeah is used uh, i this is from a little research that i did after the fact right uh, apparently it represents uh specifically teeth represent and the mouth represent morality or not morality mortality okay uh and he was basically alluding to the fact that he was a murderer <laughs> which okay. which i mean sure fine whatever i don't i don't know the I don't story know sucks <laughs> the story wasn't great um next story it was well there's there's a little bit more okay it's uh it's not a feel good story but it is one of Poe's revenge tales which he tells uh, right. like the cask of Montelato is another one. Okay. It is it is supposed that uh Poe wrote this as a rebuttal to somebody else in his life um okay. who he was basically almost saying that same thing like don't make fun of people who are smarter than you. Right. They cite her name as Elizabeth Ellett. Poe himself is it's kind of a self insert. He sees, you know, Right, that's what I figured. Sees himself as something that doesn't belong in the world. Yeah. Um, but he also specifically doesn't like to drink and he doesn't like it when people force drink on others. That's why that scene was in there. Wasn't, didn't Poe die an alcoholic? He said, he, he hey, look. <laughs> look. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, okay. I miss, maybe I misinterpreted. He doesn't like it when people force drink on other people. Because he realizes how horrible it is? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll, that's where his self, self-loathing and self-pity came from. Yeah, maybe. yeah. There's a couple of things that he may have based the story on, but yeah, that is, that is the first story. Uh, and it was, I just think it's interesting because it's one of the last works that he wrote. Right. And that was what was on his mind at the time, uh, mm. was getting literary revenge on just somebody else and basically saying, no, you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it's still, it takes a wacky turn. They dress as orangutans. That's the alternate title is uh hop frog or the eight chained orangutans. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't, that's a spoiler it, though i didn't want to give away the orangutan part even though it comes literally but in the beginning yeah but i mean like i wouldn't make any sort of connection until that he's gonna murder them until he actually says that i see I so see. like you would say in the eight orangutans i say tang but it's tan orangutan he writes tang okay whatever um but no, no it, like as like soon as he said the the king and his seven advisors i'd be like oh it's like some metaphor of orangutan and I, oh. w- I wouldn't realize it until you literally said, oh, you have to dress up as orangutan. Yeah. So I'd be like, yeah. oh, but that at like, that point, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. So. And, and that's the whole thing. It's, it's, it's metaphorical and literal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very, it's, it's very on the nose as yeah, far as, as far as stories go. Also, orangutans are the most intelligent and like gentlest of the great apes. So like. Except for that one that's like standing and just smiling. <laughs> He's so cool looking. He looks very cool. I, I'm not. But, uh. But I, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like, um, if you're comparing ignorant people to orangutans, that's not fair to orangutans. Come on. Yeah, that's true. Come on. That's They're true. really smart. They are really They're smart. Cute. They're better than that. They're better yeah. than you. One of the most, one of the worst videos I've ever seen, and it's a video I keep watching over and over, even though it's one of the worst ever. But it's a oh, baby boy. orangutan just like on a swing, and then it like bops its eye on a metal pole. Oh, and then it starts crying. Oh, and it's the saddest shit I've ever seen, but I keep going back to it. I'm like, I don't know why I keep watching this, but I just want to give it a hug. <laughs> oh, poor little guy. Yeah. He was crying just like a little baby. That's so sad. I was, uh, I was talking with my sister-in-law Yeah, and, uh, and, and I was like, I, I think I was, I was telling her, I was like, you know, I, I was like hated, you know, kids crying over every little thing. But then I, I realized that it's like, to that kid, that's the most painful experience of their life. Yeah. That is the most yeah. pain they have ever been in. And like literally everybody cries when that happens. Yeah. Like, if, it, like to this day, if you have an extremely painful experience, you're probably going to cry. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it is everything to that little person. Yeah, yeah. That is all that they know. Yeah, exactly. They also don't have the cognitive function to separate that this is going to be okay. I just need to wait it out. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. This isn't going to last forever. Yeah. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> like, it hurts right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's what Scientology is talking about. You got to get self, and then you get awareness of uh, the could, world around could you. Could you just not <laughs> bring up Scientology ever again? <laughs> wait till we talk about Christian science. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> got some opinions about that one. Um 
So the other thing that I find interesting is, uh, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later too, but um, Poe grew up in New England specifically, moving right. from Massachusetts to Maryland and everywhere in between. Okay. I always get the feeling whenever I read any of his works that I, I like to imagine where they were written. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, it's always overlooking a harbor. Yeah, me too. Somewhere. That, I've always gotten that impression too. Yeah. It's like over a harbor, it's cloudy, maybe rainy. Yeah. Like exactly. <laughs> Gray skies. A pub or something. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> um, that's, that's what I always picture. And I, I, I find that fascinating. And then, yes, I found other people who, who say the same thing. Um, but we're going to compare that with what we're about to read, which is by H.P. Lovecraft. Right. Who was... He lived in New York City, right? Uh, yes. And he uh, lived in 1890 to 1937. Right. Okay. So they're both very similar age, too. I mean, the different years, but yeah. Um, but Poe died at 40 and Lovecraft died at 47, hmm. which I also find just a little interesting. Yeah. We are going to jump into The Cats of Ulthar. Uh, okay. I believe I have read that one. Probably. It's one of his most famous works, which I didn't realize until after I read it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Even though I Googled, like, H.P. Lovecraft short stories, and it was the first one that came up. Yeah. So I should have known. Uh, but it didn't cross my mind. So, let's dive in to the Cats of Ulthar. In Ulthar, which lies beyond the river Sky, it is law that no man may kill a cat. But, but what about slaying pussy? Because that's... Doesn't say anything about that. That's, I mean... Yeah. It's got to be a thing, too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, it happens. That's perfectly fine. There's no law against that. That's probably the worst joke I've ever said. That was show. not a great <laughs> joke, but it was, I am laughing with you. Man, I got to follow that. We're going to talk about how sacred cats are now. Okay. Yeah, right? So cats are sacred in many cultures. Uh, they are wonderful creatures, but this law did not always exist. Okay. A long time ago, there lived a couple in the village of Ulthar. Couple beyond what? the river sky. A couple what? A couple codgers. Co- what? <laughs> and an old codger is a, basically saying a boomer. Oh, okay. Okay, so they lived a couple boomers. Yep. They have a Confederate flag in their yard. <laughs> <laughs> well, they live in a cottage in the woods in a village, but they're like kind of removed from the village and everyone's kind of scared to go near them. They're definitely hicks. Man, they're the crazy hicks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, see, they, for one reason or another, hate cats. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they never left their house in public, but whether it was because of the caterwauling. <laughs> huh? Huh? It's, it's okay. I mean, I think that's what caterwauling is, is like the noise. Yeah, of yeah. Cats no, no, yeah, literally. Uh, or just out of sheer prejudice, any cat that strayed into the yard at night was swiftly dispatched. Do you mean they sent them out? No. I need you to deliver this letter immediately. <laughs> you, you mean they were killed? Uh, yes. And there was no consistent way, though. Some were uh, seemingly tortured. Some were just killed. Uh, but the hatred was clear. Okay. And everybody's like, obviously, they're killing the cats. Yes. Okay. Now, everyone else in the village loves cats. Some of them had pet cats. There were stray cats that were fed and taken care of. Man, you should move somewhere else then. I'm that saying. doesn't sound like it's going to work out. I'm, I was born in this cottage. Right. I'll die in this cottage. And I found my wife to boot. She's definitely not my sister. Cats are wonderful creatures after all. Uh, and so they feared any time their felines escaped. Okay. So if a cat got out, maybe it's not coming back. If a cat did not come home the next day, they soon gave up looking for it. The couple had gotten them. Okay. (laughs) That's just the way it is. All right. Pretty consistent. Yeah. One day, a caravan of strange wanderers comes into the village, and one of them, an orphan, had no existing family, just a small black kitten that he adored. What was the name of the cat? (laughs) Uh, The cat doesn't have a name. (laughs) Are you sure? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, there is no named kitten in this story. (laughs) Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, H.P. Lovecraft, uh, not the nicest person in the world. And if you're listening to this, you probably know that. Um, he, he had a cat. Uh, I don't even know if it was a black cat. I think it was just a cat. I, yeah, I don't know. And he named it N-Word Man. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was. It's not good. Uh, no. <laughs> interesting point, though. He goes beyond racism to straight up like xenophobic. Yeah, no, he was very xenophobic. Well. Yeah. If you weren't. Was he American native or was he? I thought he was like in. In. Great Britain, and then moved to New York City. That I'm not sure. Let me Wikipedia it real quick. But but I know he like hated anyone who wasn't a white English person. Like that was the only only type of people he got along with. Right. No, he uh, was born in Providence, Rhode Island. So so he was American. Yeah. Okay. And he died in Providence, Rhode Island. He died from intestinal cancer. Oh damn. 
Anyway. Is it like asbestos related? Probably. Yeah. Like everything was back yeah, then. Yeah, probably. So the orphan's name is uh, Menes, M-E-N-E-S, or Means. Not, not Mendez? No, not Menes, okay. not Eva. Men- Menes. Yeah. Yeah. Menes. And <laughs> Menes only smiled when he was playing with his kitten. It's the only time he was happy. That's, somebody help this kid. I mean, he's basically with a wandering circus. Yeah. Uh, he only has a cat. He has no parents. Like, I, I sympathize for the kid. He's called a menace. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Dennis. <laughs> On the third morning of their stay, Menace awoke and his kitten was nowhere to be seen. Okay. He cries and eventually calms down and prays and there's no sign of the kitten. He starts wandering around and people are like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm looking for some pussy. Yeah. I'll make it work. I'll, I'll just keep using I mean, look, that joke until it works. They know, you know, the best way, <laughs> the two best ways to make a joke funny are to explain it and repeat it. Okay. I'll, over and over. <laughs> well, would it help if I explained it? Yes. Uh, pussy is uh, another word for a vagina. Okay. 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 It's explained. <laughs> <laughs> I was fully prepared for a deep dive there. No, that's the whole joke. <laughs> Did you ever see, did you ever see the Pink Panther 2 with Steve Martin? Let me bring you up to speed. We know nothing. You You're are up now to up to speed. <laughs> yeah. I use that line with my family all the time. <laughs> One of the villagers told him of the odd couple. This is Menace. They told him. So he's wandering around looking for his cat and the villager's like, ooh, yeah. maybe not, kid. Yeah. He still looks and then eventually gives up and starts praying again. Okay. He prays in a tongue that no one understands. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's, that's comforting. He stretches his hands to the cottage uh, and then goes back to business as usual. Okay. That night, the wanderers leave. Uh, they leave Ulthar, which I've probably pronounced differently every time. <laughs> I, in my mind, I read it as Ultar. Yeah. But it's, it looks like Ulthar. I don't know what it's supposed to be. No, this is Lovecraft, right? Yeah. Lovecraft had a weird way of um, doing like infernal languages and stuff. Ulthar. Because like, I know T, like... We say Cthulhu. Yeah. But C-T-H was like phlegm. It's Hulu. Like that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. I hate it. I do too. That's why yeah. nobody, <laughs> nobody, why nobody says it that it. way. Yeah. But like if, if it's T-H, it may be like a little different than. Ulchar. Yeah, Ulchar. Ulchar. Like maybe. May, I don't know. Maybe. The wanderers leave and the villagers are troubled. There's no cats in the village anymore. Okay. They're all gone. The pet cats, the stray cats, no sign of any of them. Okay. It's a stag party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See? <laughs> Rule of threes. <laughs> Old Cranon, the Burgomaster. I'm sorry? The Burgomaster. He's the Hamburglar? What? The, the Burgomaster. What does he do? <laughs> A Burgomaster, uh, because I knew you would ask, and I f- refuse to look it up, is one who presides a Burgomaster. Oh, my God. Presides over a Burgess. Okay. What's a Burgess? I believe it's like a county. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, it, it is the mayor of a Dutch, Flemish, German, Austrian, or Swiss town. Okay. The Rankin Bass Jack Frost Christmas movie from like the 50s. Yeah. Uh, has the Burgermaster Masterburger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. I think they call him Meister, the Burgermeister Meisterburger. Yeah. And uh, that's just so much fun to say. <laughs> I, I was saying that over and over as soon as I read Burgermeister in the book. Yeah. I just kept repeating that word. Fantastic word. Uh, the Burgermaster Old Cranon swore that the wanderers wandered off with their cats in revenge for Menez's kitten. We killed his pussy, so they took all ours. So it doesn't work when I do it. No. Yeah, that was that was pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, just like saying, you know, pussy vagina jokes is in bad taste anyway, but like you kind of brought it down a little bit further. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> old Nith the notary says that the, uh, the old couple were most likely suspects. Still, people were so afraid uh, that no one dared confront them. The people went to sleep in anger, and when they awoke, what did they see? Cats. Every cat was back. Okay. The pet cats, the stray cats, they were back where they belonged. All were accounted for. Even the dead cats. The citizens marveled, and the cats appeared well-fed and purred contentedly. There's one more curious thing. No cat ate their food that day or the next. Oh, no! I know where this is going. A week later, (laughs) the villagers finally noticed that there were no lights appearing in the old cottage anymore. Nope. It had been a while since anyone had seen movement. In another week, the Burger Master Masterburger decided to overcome his fears and took Shang the Blacksmith and Thule the Stonecutter. That's fucking badass right there. As witnesses. 
I just love the names in these yeah, books. Yeah, that was awesome. Ulthar Beyond the River Sky, Cranon the Burgomaster with Shang and Thule. Yeah. Thule the Stone Master. They break down the door, and what do they see? The cleanly picked skeletons of two humans on the floor, and a number of beetles crawling over them. Are you ready for this? Yes. You ready for this? Yes. They drowned in pussy. There it is. <laughs> I'm actually proud of that one. I... <laughs> I was as soon as you said it, I was waiting for that line yeah. because I knew what was coming up. <laughs> the village is shocked and talked about it for months. Everyone was asking everyone else, what what happened? What's going on? Then a law is passed by the Burgess, the Burgesses. Okay. No man may kill a cat in Ulthar beyond the river sky. Do you have to make that a law? Why can't you just be like, if you kill a cat, they're gonna fucking kill you. So just, you know, maybe not do that. Yeah, it, it goes a long way when you have to pass a law to avoid animal cruelty. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I mean, like, if people just get justice done to them, you could just, I mean, it'll sort, the problem will sort itself out. It's like a free market system. It'll, yeah, yeah, The, the yeah. economy will balance itself out exactly. eventually. Exactly. It's like, I mean, if people are being cruel to animals and they get killed by animals, problem solved. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's it. This, this story I have a little more history on than, uh, than Hot Frog. Okay. So this was written by Lovecraft as a, um, not a salute but as an imitation you know, out of respect, there's a word for it. I can't remember what it's called. Right. Uh, to a contemporary author of his, who was a uh, poet and short story writer that he loved. Um, his name was Edward Plunkett. Okay. Went by the name Lord, uh, Lord Dunsany or Dunsany. Lord Dunsany. <laughs> Lord Dunsany. D-U-N-S-A-N-Y. Dunsany. That's a crazy name. Yes. Um, he's... Uh, Lovecraft, I think, wrote four or five different short stories in Dunsany's style. Okay. This was the first one. Most people say this is the best one. Right. I didn't read any of Dunsany's works to compare the two. Right, right, right. Because the reviews that I got were, it is so much like him, it's uncanny. And the other reviews were, it's nothing like him, what are you talking about? Right. Mm -hmm. So, like everything else with literature, it is completely subjective. Yeah. Uh, but I found that very interesting, too. Uh, this came out in tw uh, 2020. Good God. <laughs> What the hell? It's like you and cameras in 1949. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're just 100 years off. This came out in 1920. Okay. Uh, and so this was not the last work he published. This was actually early on in his writing career. Okay. Um, a lot of the characters are used in other works. And the I didn't include him, but one of the characters, his name is Al Alton? Alton? Al Atal. A-T-A-L. Okay. Yep. He appears in like three other books. Huh. Uh, and it is canonically the same character this one was like actually interesting it was it was and this <laughs> one had like hot frog you kind of see where it's coming from as soon as they mention i'm going to chain you up and cover you in yeah time. i was like oh, okay all yeah. right in this one it was very much uh, what what i think having not read any of lovecraft before but only hearing people talk about him and hearing about his works right uh very much the, like the creeping horror of I know what's coming, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, yeah, what's going to happen. There, oh, there it is. There's a foreboding, yes. like, cosmic power that you can't understand. Right. So it's like, I know that, that you know, this kid is asking a cat god to do something. Like, right, <laughs> you gotta exactly. You get that feeling. There's a whole part um, that I kind of skipped. I summarized in the beginning by saying cats are uh, loved by ancient civilizations. Right, yeah. Uh, revered. Um, but he talks about like the Sphinx and where did the Sphinx get its power well, it was from the cats that came before the Sphinx, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Like it, it's, he, dude loves cats. Yeah. Wasn't that a plot point in one of the Scooby-Doo movies? Had these were cat people that were ancient. Ooh, I vaguely remember that. Is that Curse of the Mummy? No, that was Zombie Island, I think. Yeah. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, yeah, they were, uh, they were luring people to the island to take their blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah to keep themselves immortal because they worship a cat god who gave them immortality. And somehow zombies figured in there? I don't remember how. Yeah, they were actually the good guys. The oh, they yeah, were trying you're to, right! They were trying to keep the They were the ones who died away. by their hand. Yeah. Oh, my God, what a good movie. Yeah, I what actually a great movie. watched that about, I don't know, like 10 months ago, 8 months yeah. ago? For the first time, I'd never seen it before. No, it's it's good. Yeah, um, there's a, a YouTube channel I watched called Bread Sword who did the... Um, the treasure planet, like why did it fail at video essay that everyone okay. saw? Um, he did one where he watched all of the Scooby Doo movies ever. Oh, and, nice. And ranked them. Yeah. Uh, and he gave that one very high praises. So I was like, and it's like the first of the newer live action. It, or it was the action, first in the phase of, because up to that point, all the monsters had been people in costumes. Right. And right. it was the first one. It's like, 
oh no, this is real. Like there's actual monsters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that was, um, it was, I think it was the first of the movies that started in the nineties. Um, it was fantastic. It was a really, really, yeah. really good movie. Had a bang in soundtrack too. Yeah. It, it, it was cool, but I don't know. It was kind of weird because when I was younger, I, I appreciated Scooby-Doo in, in a way that like, because like b- before all the monsters were just people in suits. Yeah. And to me, I liked that because for one, it wasn't that hard, but you're trying to figure out who it is exactly right. and what their motivation is. Right. Um, but then there's also the elements of the real monsters are just greedy assholes. Yeah. Like exactly. that's what I love about the, it. The real monsters are the people who benefit from capitalist America. Exactly. That was what I loved about <laughs> Scooby-Doo. And then once they made him real, I'm like, eh, it's not really much of a mystery. It's yeah. like, you just have a real monster you're dealing with. And that's, that's something that I'm want to, I want to talk about too later. Um, cause there was another book that you and I talked about doing yeah. for Halloween that neither one of us ended up doing. Cause I think it was just too long. Right. Um, but I want to, so in, in reading this book, uh, I told you that it unlocked a memory. So I had suppressed and remembered uh, when I finished this that there was an old folk tale. Okay. That had been, it's now written down in like a storybook. It's like a kid, a, a children's storybook. Um, that my mom's best friend, who was a librarian and elementary school teacher uh, at the time, she used to read this to me anytime we went to visit her. And okay. it was like my nap time or whatever. I mean, I was a tiny, I was probably between four and eight years old. Right. And she would read me the story and it terrified me. But I loved it. What was it? What was the story? I want to be scared. It's called The Taily Poe. Ooh, I like it. And it's based on an old Appalachian myth. Okay. So we're, that's what we're going to jump into now. So I started with just two stories and I was looking for more fodder. Right, right. And then this happened and I was like, my mind was blown. So then I, I you know, looked up the myth to see if it was what I remembered. I found the actual story that she read me that had the pictures that scared me. Right, right. Horrifying. So here goes. We're diving into Taily Poe. Because it's a folktale, some details change. But here's the story as I remember it. One night, a long time ago, in the time of the mountain men, there was an old hermit who lived alone in the woods with his three dogs. It had been a long time since he'd had seen another human being, and he liked it that way. Autumn is fast closing, and the man needed to stock up food for winter. So one day when he's out hunting... Did you say fast closing? It's fast closing. It's closing fast. No. Close, closing in fast. Right? No, closing in fast would mean autumn is coming. Yeah. Autumn's ending, though. We're getting into winter. So it's almost at an end. Yeah. <laughs> fast closing is proper grammar. I've never heard that before. I'm learning a lot of things in this episode. Look, all right. I read a lot of a lot of 18 and early 1900s literature in preparation for this and also in my spare time. Okay. So my vocabulary changed a little bit. Okay. Okay. It does. My Honestly, my vocabulary change is based on what I've read like most yeah. recently. <laughs> I'll just absorb different words and then it's like, why did I say that? Um, autumn is almost over and winter's coming in. Thank you. Uh, so the, the hermit needed to stock up food for winter. One day when he's out hunting, he noticed something strange. All of the game had disappeared. Okay. He hunts and he hunts, but he doesn't find anything until just about when he's uh, ready to turn for home. He spies a creature as big as a German shepherd with tufts on his ears, like a bobcat. Its coat was glistening black, uh, in the fading light. The man sticks his dogs on the creature, but it runs. He gives chase and swings at it with his axe. He feels a crunch, but the creature had disappeared. He had managed to cut off its tail, but the rest of it got away. What? Th- this man's going at an <laughs> animal with an axe? He's hunting. Uh, this is mountain men. How did he? How did he corner it? I don't know. <laughs> the dogs. Look, this is an old folk tale. I right? mean, uh, dogs are usually for running something up a tree. Sure. He ran it up a tree, tried to swing at it, missed the creature, hit its tail, cut it off. The end. And just gave up. It ran away. There's a blood trail. You, you, Anyone yeah. who shot a deer knows there's a blood trail. Look, it's getting dark. He's got to go home. I said this is just about as he's ready to turn for home. <sighs> All right. Does he not have a gun? No, he doesn't. Actually, in some versions of the story, he does, and he shoots the tail off. Oh, um, it's more believable that he shots it off with an axe, I think. I'm saying. <laughs> but <laughs> that's, that's one of the details that, that changes. But a mountain man without a fucking gun? He doesn't Look, have a bow? No. He hunts everything with an axe? Yes. He's like axe cop. This is just an insane person out in the wilderness. I would argue most mountain men are. Yes, it's true. No, definitely. (laughs) You have to be a little bit of crazy to not do that. Right. Well, to to do that. He recalls his dogs and he goes back to the cabin. He cuts the tail up and makes a delicious stew out of it for dinner that night and has the best meal he's had in a long time. Can't be a whole lot on a tail. There's not, but it's better than nothing. Also, can you eat beaver tail? That's a... Interesting question that I do not know the answer to. I think to. it might just be a bunch of cartilage. I don't think there's any I, meat on there. I feel like 
in most interpretations of like a pelt hat, they would eat the beaver and the tails left behind for the hat. So like, I can't imagine it's that edible or maybe yeah, if it is, it's not know. that good. Cause they just use it for slapping. Yeah. So I think yeah. it would just be tough skin and cartilage. Yeah. And maybe some bone. I don't know. I'm, I'm down with that. I refuse to look it up. I've looked up too much this episode. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't, I don't care that much about it. If you know, let us know. The hermit gets ready for bed, and as he's tucking himself under the covers, he blows out the candle next to him. But something's wrong. He can still see a glow. On the candle? No, in the room. Okay. He looks at the foot of his bed and sees a pair of eyes looking at him. Eyes as bright as the moon. Holy fuck. Like two beacons in the night. He sees a shadow start to climb the foot of the bed and hears a voice say, Taily Po, my Taily Po. Where is my Taily Po? <laughs> I don't know why it puts Po on the end. It's fine. Okay. The man stammers and says, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what a Taily Po is. It crawls towards him and he jumps up and calls for his dogs. They chase the creature away and follow it outside. Of the three, only two return. The man keeps watch for a while, but eventually gets drowsy again. And just as he's about to drift off, he hears the voice again. Taily Po, my Taily Po, where is my poor Taily Po? The man shouts again, I don't know what you're talking about. This guy is dense. And he sicks his dogs on the beast, uh, and on the shadow at the foot of his bed again. Yet again, one less comes back. It's time to get off the mountain when you only have one dog left. <laughs> I'm saying. A third time later, he hears the voice and sees the shadow. This time he doesn't answer. He just sicks his last dog. This is the biggest and the meanest, the strongest dog. Okay. It doesn't come back. No sound is heard. Maybe the, 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 uh, this creature is just convincing the dogs to leave. It's like, look, nobody has to get hurt. And hey, look, that guy's an asshole, right? Yeah, he ate my, my, my goddamn tail. How would you feel? Now the man is terrified and he's determined to stay awake until dawn. He grabs his axe and holds a vigil. He sees the eyes again at the end of his bed and he hears the voice. What have you done with my poor Taily po? And it clicks. He responds, I, I ate it. The creature says, well, then I shall have to get it back and lunges. Is that the end? They say if you pass by that spot nowadays, all that remains of the cabin is a chimney stack. Everything else has been torn to the ground bit by bit. If you listen closely at night, you'll hear something like the moaning of the wind. Taily po. Taily po. Now I have my Taily po. I... <clears throat> and that's the end. You were a fucking pansy as a kid. <laughs> Look, I was four years old. <laughs> that wouldn't have scared me as a four-year-old. Oh, well, Just... I'm... Just don't eat its tail. I'm a racist man. He's hungry. He doesn't know what it is. <laughs> I'm a racist man's cat and I'm not scared of anything, man. <laughs> this is, I hate that story. <laughs> Look, there's, uh, cause I did a little bit of research into it. Too. Okay. There is, uh, commonly a thread that it is, uh, the creature is representative of cabin fever and, or oh, the, okay, um, okay. the harshness of winter. Yeah. It's, it's hard being up on a mountain alone. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was kind of a warning tale to young kids who were wanted to be like the mountain men mm -hmm. yeah. to be like, Hey, maybe don't, maybe don't. Yeah. I think that's what a lot of these old folk tales and even the writings of Lovecraft specifically, but Poe as well. Um, a lot of them are just fear of the unknown or fear of fear. Right. Yeah. Uh, just afraid of things we don't understand or afraid of what we perceive is going to happen. Until what actually happens is never that bad. Mm -hmm. It's almost, almost never as bad as you think it's going to be. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think that's what, that's more what caused the fear, I think, when I was a child. Because to this day, I mean, we've talked about it before, but thalassophobia, yeah. trypophobia. Um, but like thalassophobia is basically fear of the unknown underwater. Right. Yeah. Uh, that is something that I have big time. Can't yeah. do it. No, me too. Um, but the, the other the other book that we were going to do, and I think I want to do it for a um, Patreon episode at some point, is uh, Monster by Frank Parody. Yeah, no, I was talking to you about yeah, that, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a really thick book, but uh, I, remember I, it, I remember it being so goofy. <laughs> I remember it being entertaining, uh, but I never finished it because I was borrowing it from somebody and they asked for it back before I could finish it. Right. Which, like, come on. Yeah. We were in school together. There's no reason you needed that. <laughs> but I like books like that. Or like, um, uh, like Hop Frog or World War Z, where they're horror stories, but it's not the unknown and it's not the monsters in your head. There is actually something out there. Yeah. I like monster movies, uh, right. that kind of thing. That's the horror that I go in for. Um, the, the other kinds like the gothic horror or the, uh, cosmic horror right. are fascinating to me and I'm interested in them, but they're not, they're not as entertaining to me. Right. 
Yeah. Um, when I read books for uh, for pleasure, not for the show, I like to read things that uh, make me feel good. Like when I play video games, I like to be the overpowered god. Right, right. Because yeah. why would I want to be a normal person? Because I'm a normal person in real life. Exactly. Um, but that was that was very interesting. I, I've I've said before, uh, my main mission for the show is to read things I wouldn't normally read. Mm-hmm. And while I do, I, I mean, I read, I growl and poe every now and then. Um, I stick to the more mainstream stuff, but uh, I've never read Lovecraft and I'd been wanting to. I think um, we talk about Audible a lot, but they have a collection of all of Lovecraft's works because I think most of them, if not all of them, are in the public domain now. Okay. Uh, and it's just all of them in one thing. Right, right. And I I want to get it, but it's also like 50 hours long. Oh and that's just a God. huge commitment. Yeah. That I'm just that's not a, willing that's to make. Game of Thrones book right there. It's uh, that's Game of Thrones and a half. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it is 44 hours and I think um, Audible did do and I have been reading it lately uh, a Sherlock Holmes collection narrated by Stephen Fry highly recommend it right 66 hours long damn god damn <laughs> yeah I'm a little over halfway through that yeah uh, fantastic book but uh, but books um, but that's what I'm going for is I'm, I'm trying to read things that I wouldn't normally read and I think this I think knowing what I do about Lovecraft and how terrible of a person he was and no kind of the same thing about Poe um, I think the cats of Ulthar was a good jumping off point, mm-hmm. um, because I think it, 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 intru- it does introduce some several recurring characters from other books that he wrote, um, that you could see later on. But I think it's also a good reference to the type of horror, if not the verbiage he uses, cause he was writing to imitate somebody else. Right. Uh, to, as an homage, I think is the word I was looking for earlier, uh, to somebody else. Um, I think it was a good, a good starting point, a good jumping off point to then explore the rest of that genre. Uh, right. And I actually do look forward to doing that. Um, I'm definitely going to read more. Yeah, no, that was the uh, the most solid story out of this was that one. I definitely really like yeah. that one. Yeah. And plus, like, um, you know, Lovecraft was a big fan of cats. So it makes, makes right. sense. He would love cats. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love loved cats more than he loved some people. Most people, probably. Most people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, most yeah. people. At the end of every episode of this show, the person who read the book must give the book a rating. Our rating system consists of five levels. At the bottom, we have toilet paper. The book is only worth the physical material that it's made of. And then next is shampoo bottle. It's better than nothing. Third, we have Ikea manual, competent but not necessarily entertaining, or vice versa. It's entertaining but not competent at all. Then we have Kindle pick, worth buying electronically and or discounted. And finally, at the highest tier, we have hardcover, instant classic. You must own this book. So, quoth the raven, what is your rating for various works? Batteries not included. Text to text so separately. <laughs> uh overall for all three stories i would give it i would give them each like a kindle pick mm-hmm. i would say cats of Ulthar is a hardcover it's awesome it is 100 percent worth the read yeah there's not much more to it than what i summarized right, right um they're very very short stories uh but the hop frog story was very very interesting in that it was more humanitarian horror yeah like look at the, look um, at the was, horrid state of society. Ex- the horrid state of society and what one person did in revenge. Right. Yeah. Not justifying anything, not to fix it in straight up revenge. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Taylor Poe would just terrified me as a kid, but it was just a fun. <laughs> it was a fun. It was a fun uh, catharsis for me more right. than it was yeah. uh, anything else. Um, but it was also interesting reading and learning about the uh, the history behind it and right. how uh, what it actually meant, which is not something I picked up at all. Um, so yeah, I would give, I would give Hop Frog and Taylor Poe, Kindle Picks, Taylor Poe, maybe a, uh, maybe a shampoo bottle. No, Ikea manual. Okay. Yeah. Maybe like a, maybe like an Ikea manual on your Kindle. That's all right. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Um, Hop Frog, Kindle Pick, it, it was, it was entertaining to read. Right. Um, uh, it was given to me as kind of a, hey, this is just a wild short story. Right. And I, I completely agree with that sentiment. It's kind of wild. Exactly. It's <laughs> like, oh, he, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Uh, and then the cats of Ulthar was fascinating. The, yeah, no, that was like a fucking gripping story. Yeah, even just hearing it from you. Yeah, every time I would write a character's name, I would say, and he's like the only named character in this novel or in this short story. And then the next sentence, there would be another character, <laughs> and then okay. the next sentence would be another character. But like, there's like six names in the story, but they're all mentioned once. Right, exactly. Except yeah. for Menez. 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 Uh, and I even missed one of the names because. I just, I just miss things. Right. Yeah. Uh, but it was, I think he's the innkeeper son and he's the one who said, what's going on? But that's all he does. Was and then name, he becomes uh, Barlaman, uh, Barlaman Butterbur. He becomes apprentice to somebody named Barzai. Barzai. He becomes hmm. apprentice to somebody named Barzai. Huh. Yeah. Uh, but his name is Altal. A- Atal. Okay. Atal. 
And you, you had to look it up because one thing drives out another, as they say. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I just keep talking and eventually forget to deliver very important letters. Could, could we just do the whole Brie in thing, like just verbatim right here, right now? I probably couldn't. No. Okay. Um, if you'd like to write to us and let us know what you thought of this episode or any other episode, or if you want to make any corrections or comments or want to suggest a book to us, we have an email. It's uh, a page too far at gmail.com. That's a page T O O far at gmail.com. We also have an Instagram, a Twitter, and now we have a YouTube. We do. We just launched a YouTube page. A YouTube page. Yeah. YouTube.com slash a page too far, I think is what it'll end up being. Probably. I think we still have to like go through that hoop. Canonize to get that it. done. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, uh, Page Too Far uh, is on YouTube now. Uh, so you can leave us a comment on YouTube. We'll probably, I mean, hmm, we'll see. <laughs> we might check out comments. Maybe not. But if you want to, you know, get connected with us, then uh, you can do it through our socials, through YouTube, or through directly through our email. We also have a Patreon. Uh, if you really enjoy this type of content, we have more of it on Patreon. I don't know what I'm doing with my voice, but we have several tiers on our Patreon. The bottom tier is, uh, I think, $3. Yes. You have access to monthly outtakes. Uh, not everything we say in an episode makes it into the episode. We have, like, it's essentially a blooper reel. We call it outtakes. So you get that one of those every month. They range between five to ten minutes usually. We also have footnotes, which is just like an outtake, but a lot longer. <laughs> uh, right now we have one outtake that's about Greek mythology. It's about 11 minutes long. Um, so there's that. And the next tier up is about $5. You get a bonus episode every month. It's just like a regular episode, uh, but they're mostly longer, like less cut down, that sort of thing. So you get the raw experience. We also have movie commentaries that we do alongside of our bonus episodes that you'll have access to. We just did a commentary for Malignant, the horror film. Yes. Which is really goofy. And I really like that movie. <laughs> I can't say I agree. Uh, uh, it's with understandable. The second part of that statement. It's understandable. Um, but uh, we have that as well. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks for listening. We really appreciate our patrons and those that support us. Um, you know, don't support us if you don't have extra cash. That's completely understandable. We want you guys to take care of yourselves first. Mm -hmm. um, but if you could throw us a couple bucks, it's super appreciated. We also have uh, one piece of uh, listener feedback. Okay. Um, that I forgot about until this very moment. Oh, shit. Okay. No, no, no. That's no, all right. We'll, 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 let's do that. <laughs> no, it's okay. We can put it at the end. Because um, all it is, uh, faithful listener Menezes, uh dead kitten. Okay. Uh, you know who you are. Uh, wrote in and said, uh, this is from the, uh, the episode that just released, which is the white girl one. Okay. Uh, who's the name of the actual book escapes me. One little mistake. One. one little mistake. Yeah. I'm the one that read it. That, that was the easy one to remember out of the two. That, I remember that, cold water veins more than oh one little God. mistake because I made fun of it so much. Yeah. Um, uh, but <laughs> from one little mistake, uh, he said, I can confirm every medication I've had has been easily distinguished. Right. And recognizable. Yes. From every other medication. And. I uh, uh, corresponded with this person and went on a rant about <laughs> just just for my own yeah. for my own benefit to just to release some hard feelings there about the book um, about the book yeah so uh, thank you for for listening to my rant uh, Menez's dead kitten uh, <laughs> and for agreeing that we are not in fact uh, insane. Can I, can I just say, if you want to write in, but you don't want to reveal your real username or your real name, you could give us a pseudonym and we could use that as well. It's true. He he's specifically this person specifically asked to be referred to as uh, something from the book we just read. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. That's so. fine. <laughs> but yeah, if you just want to like just make up a name, we'll we'll use it. No yeah. problem. Yeah. You want to censor it? Let us know. Yeah. Censor it. Whatever. Bye. Bye. We need an ending. <laughs> <laughs>